Happy Sabbath, all. Happy Sabbath. All right. Um, let us begin with a word of silent prayer. Amen. All right, so Swinton went over some nice points this morning, also Val as well, showing that these things are spiritual and these things are not, easy, are not seen by the, human, by, the, by the natural eye. Amen? So if it's not seen by the natural eye, which eye must we have? A spiritual eye. Because when you go to Daniel chapter 7, you see, you see the horn. The horn has what on it? Eyes of a man. Amen? All right, so we must have the eyes, eyes of who? The eyes of Christ, because the, the beasts, the beasts in Revelation 4 are filled, full of what? They're full of eyes. So we must be as them. Amen? All right. So I want us all to pay attention. I want us all to respond. I want us all to be awake. All right? Okay, so when Sunan was going, he brought up the point. It says, if what man? If any man, so it's dealing with every single human being upon the earth. Amen? Amen. All right, it says, and what are the features lastly um, revealed? What are the features, the last features, what are the last scenes plain, plain revealed in the scripture of truth? He, he just went over it. The working of the man of sin. Amen? All right. So, and... And he said that the first, the second, and the what? Third angel is what um, shows Rome and, and what keeps us out of the inroads of Rome. All right? So, all right, we're going to, this is the point we're going to look at. We're going to look at Rome. Rome is not a natural territory. We need to understand that Rome is a spirit. This spirit of Rome we have to continually fight against. Rome has a literal landmass. Yes, that is true. But, that means nothing to us if we, don't, if we don't see the spirit of Rome. This is what we must contend against always. And the spirit of Rome is here. Because um, the quote, he read, he read the quote and said that um, Rome is the, it says, it says that Rome is the um, something of the human heart, right? Yeah, amen, yes. So, Amen, yes. So every, every human here has that, has that spirit within them. And this is, what, this is what we must fight against. But go ahead to Swinner's notes. You can go to the bottom of page three. Go to the bottom of page three and then quote from GC446.1. Everyone there? Yeah, it's the bottom of page three. It says the special what? Characteristic of the beast. And therefore, if his image is what? Okay. So the characteristic of, I'll just put right here, this is Rome or the beast, which is this man of sin as Swinon has here. This special um, character of it is what? Do we all see this? Because Swin is the only one answering. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's the breaking of what? God, God's commandments. It's the special characteristic. Keep it there for short. All right. So now this, in the same notes. Um... 
go down to page 7, uh, under the heading, the heart, he has there. Someone read the first sentence, please. Yes. Everyone there? Yeah. All right. So read that sentence there. Popery is the religion of, the, of human nature and the mass of humanity by the doctrine that permits them to commit sin and yet frees them from its consequences. Amen. All right. And and then the rest of the quote at it says therefore they go into false ways into forbidden paths become self-sufficient, self-inflated, self-inflated, excuse me, after the pattern of the Pope and not after the pattern of Jesus Christ. So this, this is the result of following Rome. You would always go down this route. Amen? Okay, all right. Now let's go to our notes. So last Sabbath, Canard soon was going over Rome, and um, Canard had these quotes, quotes in there, and then, this is what we'll look at, the policy of Rome. So these beasts before pagan Rome, they were all natural beasts. You had a lion, a bear, and a leopard. Everyone knows what a lion, a bear, and a leopard is. So now this, this beast breaks the laws of nature. So it's an unnatural beast. So it must be understood figuratively or spiritually. So, and um, a point was brought up last week as well. The only one that could have come and then contend with Rome is Jesus Christ himself. Because Jesus Christ, his birth was, was Christ's birth a natural birth or a spiritual birth? His first birth when he came to earth. Spiritual, it broke the laws of nature. A woman, which is a virgin, somehow bore seed. Amen? So it must be understood what then? Spiritually. Amen? So the only one that can deal with Rome is Christ, Jesus Christ himself. Amen? All right. So the point Christ has shown us with this, Literally, when he came upon earth, and literally with, with, with both these charts, is that this is a spiritual warfare. And we have to understand this is a spiritual warfare. The errors within our hearts will want to destroy us as the dragon tried to destroy Christ. Amen? Amen. So we have to watch for this. So, and um, we see in the book of John, this, this dragon here is illustrating Satan himself. So Rome, so Rome is showing forth the, the working of Satan himself. That is, the, Rome highlights the work of Satan the most. Amen? Okay, all right. So we're going to look at this policy of Rome. Go to the first quote. A king of first countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up, and his power, and his power shall be mighty, not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully. More blood was shed by Rome than by any other nation that was ever on the earth. I read it a moment ago. He shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and, sh and he shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. And through his policy, not through policy, but through his policy, it is his own, you see? Not the policy of another. It is his peculiar policy distinguished from all others. So Babylon, Medo Persia, and Greece, um, Greece had their own policy. But Rome comes in, put forth its own special ingredient into the the earth and works in that way. Go ahead, Swindon. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. First. From the first. Amen. Amen. From at that point. Amen. Yeah, that is nice. All right. So let's keep in mind this policy, okay? Next paragraph. Through his policy also, also he shall cause crafts to prosper in his hand. And what? He shall magnify himself in his heart. And by what? And by what? Okay. By peace shall destroy many. By peace shall destroy many. Destroy people by peace. Okay. You see it, Kerry? We're at the third paragraph, page 136, paragraph 20. It's the top of the notes. Rome, peace. Yeah, paragraph 20. We're at the top, top of the notes. Okay. It says, Mrs. S.M.I. Henry, she says, the margin says, by prosperity. 
So this is the point that um, Kanar brought up as well last week that um, the other versions also says, says other things. But when you look up what, what peace means, peace also means this, as Mrs. Henry says here. So peace, as she says, means what? Okay. Amen, yes. It's Amen. Okay. So by peace, or in, or in other words, prosperity. Parody. Okay. Next one. Um, next quote says, The revised version says, And in their what? Security shall destroy many. So another margin says security. Yeah, yeah, amen. Yes, another version says by security. So this is how Rome destroys. Peace, prosperity, security. These are all one. Because if you're secure... You have peace. If you if, if if you prosper, you have peace. If you have peace, you have security. They're all um they're all one and the same. Continue on. Go ahead. I was gonna say another point. Prosperity means to be success to be successful in something good. Amen. Yes. Rome, Rome will make you successful, and by so doing, that's how you will be destroyed. Amen. So Satan loves to make people successful in life. Amen. Because by so being, he can destroy them. And we saw he tried to make Christ successful. When he put him on the mount. Exactly. Me, Amen. He rejected his prosperity and chose poverty over riches. Amen. Christ, um, the Lord says, choose poverty. But a point, a point in which, what you said, Conard, is that um, it says, successful in something good. But the papacy comes and defines what is good. Rome comes and defines what is good, makes people successful upon that. Because Christ does the same thing. Christ gives us peace, security, prosperity. But, but, amen. But the Bible says God is good and none else. So it's by his idea, not by the policy of Rome. Quentin and Swindon. Hard for women to labor too. You have to bring forth fruit. Amen. If he was just giving them success like before, then they would just go to Rome to get that. Mm -hmm. Instead of being too prosperous. And Amen. Sin would be their Amen. Go, we'll, we'll see that as we go along. In terms of the use of the good, the Bible says that the fruit, the fruit was good for food. The good, Rome doesn't necessarily come with bad things. This is what I want yeah, to say. Amen, yes. When Satan gave, <clears throat> tried to give the earth to Christ, the Bible said, and God created heaven and earth, and he saw that, that it, it was, was good. good. So yeah. Satan was trying to give him something that was good. Mm -hmm. Right? It's just that Satan was saying, worship me. Amen. Right? So in order to receive that, you would have to change ownership of who the good is from. Amen. Amen. Because the scripture says, the meat shall inherit thee earth and christ is the meekest man that has ever lived so it was his right to get the earth but christ understood the three angels messages he 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 understood the plan of salvation he knew that there's not the time and he saw that just as swindle was saying this would lead him to worship satan amen 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 <clears throat> okay continue on paragraph 22 says, the text is true. By peace he shall destroy many. The peace of Rome is what? Destruction, destruction to those who have it. We have to see the peace of Rome as destruction because the peace of Rome will not look like destruction in any way. To the natural eyes, it will look like prosperity, the best prosperity that man could ever attain to in this life. It says, there is a whole lot of history in that one clause. I do not say that the margin is not true or that this revised version is not true, they are all true, and it takes all of them to express the full meaning in the original word. word. But the, okay, skip that. Next paragraph. Now let us glance at Roman history. Just, just as, as it is spoken of here, a king of first countenance and understanding dark sentences, dark schemes, shall stand up. Now, put those two expressions together. Through his policy, also he shall cause craft to prosper, and by peace shall destroy many. 
The policy of Rome was a peaceful policy. By what was the result? Um, but what was the result of it? Thank you. Shall destroy many. All right. Also, he shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. He does nothing but destroy. So Rome, all Rome does is destroy. So in our history, in the time in which we're living, where a, a, a good portion of us were alive in, where did we see Rome on, on, on this line the first time? Where? Huh? No, before that. 1989. That's where Rome, Rome comes about. The very first time Rome... The, exactly. Amen. So here you have destruction. This is what Rome was bringing. Destruction. Amen. Yes, because 9-11 brought destruction. But this destruction only came on 9-11 because, because of the destructive policy of Rome. It is being injected into the United States and it's permeating in the United States. And, and at one point, it will bear forth a full fruit, a full ripened fruit. Go ahead, Kunar. I was going to say, no, that piece is connected to Daniel 11, 44. Mm -hmm. It says, Titan, God of the east and the north, shall struggle him. Therefore, he shall go forth with great fury to destroy. And Amen. To make way made with peace. Amen, people yes. Tell people, don't worry about this wrath that's going to come from God. You're not going to die. Amen. This is how you're going to get people to receive the, the mark of the beast. Of the Amen. All right, so now let's go read, um, read, read the verse that, that, that um, I think it says Jones spoke about. Yes, Daniel 8.25. It says, and through his policy, also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. He shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. If you, this is, this is speaking about the end of the world because the pa Rome, this is Satan. He's going to come up and stand against the prince of, prince of princes. He shall be broken without hand. Anytime, anytime the Bible speaks about without hand, it's speaking about the work of God alone. Amen. The spiritual. It has nothing to do with man because it says without hand, without the natural man's hand. Amen, Michelle? All right. So peace says his security, genuine or false. Abundance, peaceably, prosperity, quietness. So also, peace is quietness. And every mother knows this. They always say, say, say unto their child, give me peace and quiet. quiet. So quietness is directly linked with peace. So this is what the Rome want, wants, wants man to have. But God also wants man to have these very same things. Amen, uh, yes. They, cry, cry uh, they going they against the policy of Rome. Yeah. Amen. Amen. They have Amen. But quietness means freedom from agitation or emotion. So those uh, who desire the peace of Rome, they don't want to be agitated. But God says agitate. 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 Amen. Amen. All right, so now we're going to look at this peaceably. First Chronicles twelve seventeen, And what this means. It says, and David... Went went out. Okay, I forgot to. Kanar goes. You use this text much. All scripture is is what given by um for for doctrine for for reproof for for instruction for correction. All right. So we're gonna use this this, this verse here so that um the Lord can instruct us upon upon the work of Rome, the policy of Rome. It says and this this policy of Rome is the policy of Satan because the dragon. Is Satan. And David went out to meet them and answered and said unto them, If if ye become what? Peaceably unto me to help me, mine heart shall be what? Knit unto you. So when you accept the policy of Rome, the peaceful policy of Rome, what are you doing? Exactly. You're knitting your heart onto Satan. This is what, what it means. You're knitting your heart to Satan, and you're saying, I will never leave your side, Satan. Go ahead. Know that you don't, but he Amen. Satan knows this. Satan's evil eye is upon us if we don't understand these things. But his, his evil eye is upon us when we do understand these things as well, too. He knows if you accept his peace, you're on, God is going to put you under his control. Amen. You're knit to him. 
Go ahead, Rashad. See, um, one of the words that you didn't put for peace is abundance. I don't know if you want to get there. Oh, yeah. yeah. I should put it down. But yes. Uh, abundance yes. Is, is what the rich have. And that's Amen. why it's so hard for them to enter to, into the, kingdom, into of the kingdom of God. Amen. Because, because of that abundance, they, they want to settle on their leaves. They want to Amen. keep this peace. But the Lord says, choose poverty. To, Amen. To agitate, to have... To have um, the opposite of Satan's peace, but Amen. in it, you he also gives you that peace. You have Amen. peace from the world. Amen. Yeah, Christ says, it says, in me you shall have peace, yes. but in the world you shall have Tribulation. agitation. Right. You won't have quietness. Mm -hmm. You won't have peace. You won't have security. But it does not, Christ also tells us, fear not him that can destroy the what? Body. body. Amen. But fear him that can destroy both the body and the soul in hell. Okay. Yeah. That's what he said. He yeah, said, accept my way, and I won't agitate. I will tell my people, don't come bother you. I'll go up mm -hmm. and keep lying to you. Yeah. If he knows when probation closed, now he can do whatever he, he wants, wants to you. you. You yep. don't know that, but he does. Amen. And Satan will trouble them the most. But then, even after that, after Satan troubles them, God is going to trouble them. And God's trouble is worse than Satan's trouble. Going go ahead. Up, I said, what people neglect is that if you go with, with Satan's peace, his peace is only temporarily. Yeah. It's only yep. temporary. But once you, the, the Bible teaches us that once you go to Satan's peace, you're automatically upon the false bed. Yeah. And oh, yeah. from being upon no the false bed, there's, no, yes. there's no rest. And that is eternal, where you, you have, you're on this, this, this false this bed. bed. And, you're, and now Christ now is, um, troubling, is you. troubling you. Amen. If you don't understand the false bed, you should go and study out the false bed. Because... And the Lord uses a natural um, means to go and teach how, how he will trouble man. He uses the false bed. Go and study out the false bed and you'll see. And Swinnon said that there's no rest for the wicked. The false bed shows you there's no rest. Amen. Yes. The, it is. Yes. It is very annoying. And the bed is too short. Yeah. And the bed is too short and the bed is too narrow. It is a, it's a hurtful, painful thing. And it's going throughout the whole night. It's a troubling experience. And then finally when you get to a sleep, you get a nightmare. Uh, amen, yes. And then you're awakened. And this is what Christ says. He says that when it's night, you will wish, wish for the day. But then when it's day, you wish for the night. You're in constant, constant trouble. So, and just like Swin and Son, <clears throat> we have to see that this is about us. There is a spirit within us. There's a spirit of man that is not right. And this is a spirit that we have to fight against. This is something that we, Satan, Satan is going to tempt us on points in which, in, which, in which we have turned from. And God is going to come forward and t tell us things, new things about ourselves. And we have to fight both of them at the same time. At the same time. So we have to be um, apt to hear reproof. We have to be apt to hear instruction. We must be um, quick to um, confess. And all these things is talking about our heart. It is either the policy of Christ or the policy of Rome. And, and I would like to add one more, is, and also not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. Devices. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> all right. So now we use another story, because all scripture is given unto us for instruction. Amen. 2 Samuel 3.20. So Abner came to David to Hebron, and twenty men with him. And David made Abner and the men that were with him a feast. And Abner said unto David, I will arise and go and will gather all Israel unto my lord the king, that they may make a league with thee, and that thou mayest reign, reign over all that thine heart desireth. And David sent Abner away and went in peace. All right, when we're reading this, keep in mind we're looking at Rome. The scriptures is showing us the, the two, Christ and Satan, the kingdom of heaven, or the kingdom of Rome. These are the two. So all scriptures we're looking at right now is pertaining to Rome. All right, Shayla? Following? Okay. 22. And behold, the servants of David and Joab came from, from pursuing a troop and, and brought in a great spoil with them. But Abner was not with David in Hebron, for, for he had sent him away, and he was gone in peace. When Joab and all the hosts that was with him were come, they told Joab, saying, Abner, the son of Ner, came, came to the king. Um, 
and and he have sent, sent, sent him away, and he is gone in peace. Then Joab came to the king and said, What hast thou done? Behold, Abner came unto thee. Why is it that thou hast sent him away, and he is quite gone? Thou knowest Abner, the son of Ner, that he came to what? Deceive, Deceive thee. And to know thy going out and thy coming in, and to know all that thou doest. Keep this in mind. This is the this is the work of Rome always. Yeah. Rome wants to know, yeah. Satan wants to know what's in your mind. Amen. The mind is the hidden things. And just go back into heaven. Lucifer wanted to be within the council. The council of, of the Godhead was the mind of God. He wanted to be in the mind. He didn't control of your mind. He gets to put what he wants in there. So he knows all of it. Amen. Yes, because Satan does not know anything that's going on in the mind. In anyone's mind here. But he can read a movement very well. Okay, so keep this in mind because if you go look at the story of Hezekiah, this is, is the story of Hezekiah is showing us Ronald Reagan. This is the very same thing. Ronald Reagan allowed 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 Rome Rome to come in and see all the going in and the going out of the United States. Amen. And knew all the plans of the United States. So this is here to show us how Satan is moving. I would say it's moving in the earth Amen. and it's moving in the church. We have to see both of them. So this is this is what Joab is t um, saying unto David. Why are you doing this? So Joab, we must be as faithful Joab to go, go, go and tell the kings of the nations, why are you doing this? You should not have let um, Abner in, Rome in, from letting Rome know the going out and the coming in of the United States. Because all Abner wants to do, all Rome wants to do, is take down the Constitution of the United States. Amen? Amen. All right. So, this is this is the the this is what Satan wants. This is what he wanted in heaven. He wanted to be in that council, and he could not. So he comes to earth, and he wants wants the very same thing. He wants to be in the councils, the councils of the heart. That's another point to study out. Councils of the heart. He wants to be in in here in the mind. Amen. So, and Satan did this again with the twelve disciples. He he. He um, put somebody in, in, in the midst of the 12. Who? Judas. Judas. And Christ said, while, while, while Judas was there, he could not say things. He had to hold back from saying things because he knew that Judas was there. So then he went and had to go and um, wait until Judas was gone. And then he could open up more enlightening things onto them at, at, at that time. Amen. He had to hide all the things. All right. Let's go to Genesis 34, 21. <clears throat> it says, these men are what? Peaceable. Peaceable with us. Therefore, let them dwell in the what? Yeah. And, and what? Trade in their for the land, behold, for the land, behold, it is large, large enough for them. Let us what? Take, Take their daughters to us for wives and let us what? Give us, let us give them our daughters. Exactly. It's the mingling, yes, of the holy seed and the unholy seed. So this is, this is what happens when you take on the policy of Rome. Ours is peaceable. So we can go and dwell in their land. We can trade with them and, and then have, have our family to mingle among them. This is what this verse is saying. So we, this, it's a very subtle, subtle work. And it's something I don't understand fully, but I know the Lord is opening it up. I know that. And God does not want us to be deceived. In the beginning, America did it with the Indians, and, ah, yes. and even now, being a republic, they're doing it with, with the communists. Amen, yes, with the, with the um, false ideas mm -hmm. of the South, yes. Amen. Amen. Okay, so Satan's, his, his way of trying to come in is always peaceably. In heaven, he, he, he said he wanted to lift up all, all beings and to release the shackles from all beings and make it sound all nice and pretty. But no, in his heart was what was evil. And there's a verse that, that says that as well. Just not coming to mind at this time. Amen, yes. Amen. Okay. So, um, we know that a time is coming when, when the Lord shall give us great abundance. Because the Lord gives us great abundance. And the Lord will test us even with that abundance too. 
So we have, we have to be mindful of it. The Lord tests us in both ways, in poverty and in, uh, and in abundance. Amen? Amen. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. Amen? Amen? Okay. So we're in this time of poverty where we don't, don't have much. And we have to keep the lessons in which we learn in poverty in mind. We have to be poor in spirit. Can I put the quote, um, the text in the chat? Um, Blessed are they who are poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. If you go, go through Matthew, I think that's Matthew 5, when, when Christ says, Blessed are the hungry, for they, they shall be fed. Blessed are, the, are, are, are this, because they shall receive this. In that whole thing, it speaks about natural things, natural things, natural things. But then when Christ says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, he brings it spiritual. It says, There shall be the kingdom of heaven. Because he's really showing that is where true riches come from. He's showing that riches do not come from Rome. It really comes from the kingdom of heaven. Amen? All right. So I'm saying this to say, I'm saying this point of the abundance because of Deuteronomy 8, 10 uh, to 17. Read verse 10. It says, When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. So the Lord starts off by showing us the right. This is what we are to do. When, when the Lord blesses us with peace, prosperity, security, quietness, abundance, this is how we are to do it. Give the glory unto the Lord. Amen? Amen. The first angel message says, fear God and what? Give glory. Give glory. So this is our first work. Verse 11, it says what? Beware. Beware, Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God and in, in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which, which I command thee this day. So when this abundance come, we have to beware. Just because the abundance come, the finances and all these things, we have to use it all right. Joseph did it all right. He, 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 he had riches and he used it to go in um, further the work of Christ and to um, build a tomb for, for, um, for, for Christ as well. So... When, when this peace comes, Christ is going to test us, test us with this abundance and peace as well. And, and, the, and, the, um, and the thing, and the thing that, that, that we, must watch, we must watch for is that we forget, forget the Lord. Because it says, beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. Amen. And which commandment says remember? The Amen. The fourth. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So we must remember God in everything we do, whether in poverty or in abundance. Amen? All right. Verse 12. Lest. So now he's saying, if you do forget, this is what, what, what will happen. If you do forget, this is what will happen. So we're seeing, <clears throat> we're seeing um, what happened unto Lucifer himself in heaven. He had an abundance. We'll, we'll read that as we go along says, Lest, when thou hast eaten and, and art full, and hast built goodly houses, and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thine heart be what? Lifted up. So the Lord is going to test us to see if we will really lift ourselves up. That is, that is what Lucifer did in heaven, and we will have to meet the same test as Lucifer in heaven. The Lord is going to laud us with so much things, natural and spiritual, but more so spiritual, with great, great abundance, like seeing things that man has never seen, seeing things that Paul had not seen, seeing things that John had not seen, because it was all for this last generation. Amen? So with, with this abundance of light, with this abundance and this quietness, quiet, quietness, quietness excuse me, that the Lord will give, he's going to test us with abundance as well. So, because Satan had it all, he lifted himself up. Continuing on verse 14. Then thine heart be lifted up, and thou what? Forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Jump down to verse 17. And thou say in thine heart. So that is where it's always shown forth first. Exactly. My power and the might of mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. Amen. This is exactly what the king of Babylon says. Amen. Sunan Sunan had it in his notes. So this is this is the, the 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 problem of man, is that when we get all the greatness and the goodness, we say I did it. 
It was me. It's not of God. I did it in my own power. Amen. In their own thoughts. This is the problem. So this is something we really have to watch. And it's in every single one of us. And this is something we have to constantly, constantly fight against. So... Yes. Think they can um, glorify God. Amen. So the Lord came and destroyed those towers. It's showing what shall happen to us if we do the very same work. And a tower is also a doctrine. So if we build up ourselves with, with, with the false doctrine, the Lord's going to take it down. As, as we said, when, it, um, when Swin was going, everybody that left from this light, they went out and built a city. They built a city and a tower. And they fence it about with their false theories. Amen. Something, something where they can have security. They all are going forward in the same path of Rome. Everybody is doing, doing after Rome. And the world knows it. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. Everybody knows this. This is, Satan has permeated people's mind with this Roman doctrine. Everybody knows this. Amen. All roads lead to Rome. So, and that's a lie because right unto man, but the ways, the ways there are, yeah, amen, are death. Amen. So it's a lie because there is a road that is high and lifted up above the world. And so therefore it's not all roads. It's majority of roads that lead to Rome. But there's one road that does not lead to Rome. And we have to stay on that road. Because in a narrow vision, many people fell off and they, they fell off into the dark and wicked world below into Rome, and they followed the, the music, the acting, the everything of Rome. That other road that doesn't lead to Rome is labeled with fanatical crowds. Amen, yes. These people are poor, they're poverty. They're, 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 they're straight-laced, they're, they're, they're extremists. They have nothing worthy of exalting. Amen. So, we, which is true, we do have nothing to, to exalt in. But Paul says, our glory in the what? In, in the infirmities, in the cross. That is where Paul gloried in. We do have something to glory in. It's the cross. That is where we are to glory in. All right, continuing on. We'll look at this beware again. And this beware is directly linked with, with, with what Moses says here. In Luke 12, 15, <clears throat> he said unto them, Take heed and what? Beware. Of what? Covetousness. Mm -hmm. Which commandment is that one? Yeah. It's the tenth. And the tenth is is the root of breaking every single one of them. So, in Moses brings up the fourth, whereas, whereas if you break, break the fourth, you're breaking them all. And then Luke, actually, Jesus actually says here, if you go and break, break um, the tenth, you are, you are breaking all of them. It's the same thing. It says, it says, for a man's life consisteth not in the what? Abundance of the things which he possesseth. Amen. They think that, Think that to be great and on yes, money is life. And land, and land and gold. There's there's a hymn that goes like that. All right. It says next paragraph. Habits of what? Negligence should be resolutely overcome. Many think it a sufficient excuse for the grossest errors to plead forgetfulness, but do they not, as well as others, possess intellectual faculties? Then they should discipline their minds to be what? Retentive. To retain God in their thoughts, in their knowledge. It says it is a sin to forget, a sin to be negligent. So if you end up, um, if you forget, you're liable to forget the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And therefore you shall work on that day and do the works of the man of sin. It says, if you form a habit of negligence, you may neglect your own soul salvation and at last find that you are unready for the kingdom of God. Next, par next verse. Continuing on. But, um, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is this day. So when this abundance comes, we have to remember the Lord thy God. So... In verse um, 14, is it 14? Yes, 14, the Lord speaks about forgetting. And in verse 18, he comes now speaking about remember. This whole thing is about the Sabbath. It's about the mark of the beast. It's about the image of the beast test. It's about the son-in-law crisis. This is what it's really tending to. It's what it's speaking of. 
It says, for, oh, I read that already. Verse 19. And it shall be, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them, I testify against you this day that ye shall surely perish. As nations which the Lord destroyeth before your face, so shall ye perish, because ye would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. <clears throat> Next paragraph. So now she quotes the same verses in which we read, verses 10 and 11. And now this is something in which we can bring, bring in each, each day we live. It says, this is where a decided, the bold, sorry. This is where a decided failure has ever been made. The thankfulness of God's people has been in no way proportioned to the favors and blessings God has liberally bestowed. It is not strange that those who claim, to be Bible amen, and, and to have a knowledge of God do the very things the Lord has commanded them not to do. So we have to be thankful for all things. And, and, and the Bible tells us the things in which we should be thankful, thankful for. Go back to verse 10. When thou eatest and art full both natural and spiritual. We, we must be thankful of both these things, our natural bread and our spiritual bread. For man should not live by bread alone. Mm -hmm. Amen, yes. Yeah, that's, that, that's actually one of the statutes as well yeah, of Moses that, um, that he wrote, rather, I should say. All right. Go down, next paragraph. How many there are in our day who are regardless of God's warning and cautions against self-exaltation? They are what? Self-satisfied. All right. Hold on. I think I didn't read this quote from Swindon's notes. Oh, yeah. Actually, no, I did. It says, therefore, they go into false ways, into forbidden paths, become self-sufficient, self-inflated after the pattern of the Pope, not after the pattern of Jesus Christ. That was a quote, yes. And it says here, they are self-satisfied, and they look upon the blessings God has given them as a result of their own genius and skill. Everybody that fell away had done this. Every single, every single person, amen. Is it not great Babylon that I have built? <clears throat> Everybody did this, and we have to beware of this. And the Lord, is, Lord spoke to Moses, and Moses is now speaking to us, saying, beware. Beware the leaven of the Pharisees. Beware of this. It says, they flatter themselves that they possess talents of a superior order. Continuing on. It says, here are what? Pointed out the dangers which every child of God must shun. Self what? Amen. Of the Lord's goods. Are we following? All right. Deception, dishonesty, and self-exaltation. Just as surely as the church forgets God and exalts self, God will withdraw his blessings and punish them. This, this work of... Um, Apostasy began with Satan and his strife for the what? Preeminence. This is what it's all about. The tenth commandment is talking, is striking against this spirit. He rejected the divine authority and became a rebel to the government of God. The hidden what? Principle, principle of all sin. I should have underlined this. The hidden principle of all sin is a rejection of the will of God, the refusal to acknowledge God, uh, acknowledge dependence upon him. So this is this, I, I thought about it before. I was thinking, in this world, there's many gays and trans and all these people, and, and they hate religion, but they have the same Romish heart. The, it says that, um, it says, the refusal to acknowledge depends upon him. So I was thinking, how can they end up becoming on the side of Rome as well? It is, it's the same thing in the world. The, um, women do not want to be dependent upon the man. And, and gays do not want to be dependent upon God so that God can go and tell them what a man and a woman is. This is the problem with every sect, every religion, every problem in, in, in the earth is that they do not want to depend on that which God has set forth. This is why marriages are so bad. This is why society is bad. Go ahead, Swindon. Something I didn't stress when I was saying, it says, if anyone knows, it says, if you see the mark in your forehead, mm -hmm. choice <clears throat> on your hand, you go along with it. Amen, yes. Yes. They, they, because it's to their benefit. Yep. They Amen. get to live that mm -hmm. life because, because the quote says, all those who, who open the religion of the human heart mm -hmm. and the love of religion uh, allows, allows them, them to yeah, sin the, the least, least amount of. Amen. So, 
And we've seen it with the vaccine. All those, all those who take it, they had security. They had quietness. They had abundance. They had, they, they had, they, they lived peaceably. Amen. They, they could work. They, they could buy and sell. Go ahead. And all of that, by that, that's how you know a judgment is coming. Amen. Because it says the wave, the wages of sin is death. Mm-hmm. And if, and if the way that seems right, but the end is destruction. So everyone that did that, the Lord has let us know that a judgment is coming for doing that. Amen. And, and the world will feel that judgment. Amen. And all those, all those companies that had um, allowed man to go and continue in sin. Because they oppressed people. Amen. They will feel it. Every single one of them. Lord this Lord. earth is going to be. It's going to look so bad. It's going to be horrible. But the Bible says, in Christ we shall have peace. Even though they may do all these things, in Christ we shall have peace. Amen. We shall have pr- prosperity, quietness, security in Christ. Um, okay, yes. So the spirit of Rome, their policy, I'll just put an arrow, is all these things. But a part of the policy is also no dependence upon God. Amen. No dependence on God. That's that is a part of Rome's policy. So we have to depend upon God for all things. If we don't depend upon God for for all things, we're manifesting the spirit of Rome. We're manifesting the policy of Rome. Go ahead. In true? America is the spirit of Rome. Mm-hmm. This is what this is what most Adventism is missing. That they that's why the Lord is teaching us these things that you are to be a government for yourself, by yourself, of, of yourself. That's Amen. the spirit of America. Yes. And that's what Rome is coming for. Amen. So every Adventist who claims I'm not gonna keep the Sunday up, that's what Rome is coming for. Yeah. That that and when they make those statements, they're saying the same thing as Peter. I will not deny thee. They're, they are dependent upon their own strength. So they went to Rome to go and fight against Rome. It, it's foolishness. They will fall by Rome. Continuing on. says, the refusal to acknowledge dependence upon him. God's, amen, are, are for the protection, the security. Um, where was I? Yeah, pr- prosperity, amen, of men. And those who render willing obedience to him will never weary of his service. But when self is allowed to gain the supremacy, then man becomes rebellious and self-exalted. Next paragraph. God alone is what? Independent. independent. All right. So there, there's also an independence that we have within God's kingdom. But our independence is, is us willingly choosing whom we will serve. And... and and all unfallen beings willingly choose to follow God. It's independence from the world. Amen. Independence from the world. We do not have to depend upon Rome. Because Rome doesn't give us anything. God is the great life giver. So if he can give life, he can give us all things that's, that will sustain and upkeep life. It says, every being that he has created in heaven and in earth is dependent upon him. God... Um, d- Designs that man shall subordinate his will to the divine will. The will of God is, is um, amen, the will of every human being. When man re- realizes his dependence upon God and subjects his will to the divine will, he will grow like Christ in character, who lives in entire conformity to the will of his Father. So Rome's policy or will is, is directly um, contrary to this. And... The United States had had um, has has this very same thing. It was called the um, Amen. They 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 had they had took taken themselves from Rome and declared themselves independent from Rome. Fathers, Amen. So, <clears throat> what makes Rome independent? What excuse me? What makes the United States independent is the Constitution of the United States and the Bill of Rights. Amen. Yes. Okay. Oh, man. Okay. Okay. Um, 
I want to go through all this. Next paragraph. It says, as a people, so now this is speaking of towards us. There's, there's many things I know the Lord wants to show us, but there's so much things in the spiritual realm that the Lord wants to show us. And I thank God since the 54th month that he has been literally opening up these things in the spiritual realm, the things that are not seen. It, it, is, it, is, it is a sign that our eyes, amen, yes, the eyesight is, is, um, is sharper than it was last year and so forth. So I, I really thank God for these things. But anyways. Mm -hmm. Amen, yes. <laughs> yes. Amen. Amen. It's an advancing light. Yes, I know. All right. As we continue on, let's go. It says, as a people, this is about living waters. I don't care about the churches out there or that, that man there or those over there. It's speaking about us. Amen. 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 Alyssa. Amen. Althea. Amen. It's speaking about us. Go ahead, Kunar. The air, the water. Amen. No matter how high we get in life, we'll always be dependent upon the sun. No man can go up to the sun and say, sun, stop shining. The sun is mm -hmm. going to shine whether you want it to or, or not. not. And that, <clears throat> that is there to teach man that man is forever dependent upon God. Amen. Amen. And, and we see this, like, there was, it, it, it snows, it snows one day, and then the next day it is sun, sunny hot. So it is showing that we are... We are dependent upon, upon the things that God has made. Rain, water, snow, sleet, sun, clouds, all these things. We all need those things for health. There is no snow without the sun. Amen. Rain without the sun. Without yes, the amen. It's all there upon the sun. Amen. All right. Amen. <clears throat> but it's, it's a foolish thing where you think that you don't need God while you're living in his house. You're living, and women do this the same thing in this day. Women, the, the, they, they say that they don't need men and that, they should, that women should kill all men. And it, it doesn't make sense. When women live in a house where primarily men build a house, you say you don't need men, but you're living in a house that a man built, and us as the church saying we, we don't need God, but we're living in a house that God, God built. Right, Asante? All right. So it does not make it. It's it, it's a it's it's a delusion that, that it doesn't make sense. If you just look at your surroundings, you see, yeah, um, um, Bob built this house. So you you know that this was a man that that went and built this house. All right. Go to the next next quote. C H S two thirty three paragraph one it says, as a people, we lose we lose much by lack of sympathy and what sociability with one another. He who talks of what? Independence and shuts himself up to himself is not filling the, filling the position that God designed he should. So just why there's a quote that says that once man leaves their post of duty, the powers of darkness gain, gain the advantage. So once, once we, take, we take this, this stance, the powers of darkness are gaining an advantage. Once Lucifer left his post by, by the side of Christ, immediately when he did it, then the powers of darkness, the evil thoughts in his mind, gained an advantage. So the powers of darkness, based upon what I just said, is also evil thoughts. Amen, yes. Because he put that seed, and then he watered it by leaving the side of Christ. And that's what happened with Judas. That's what Swinton was going over. As you mentioned Germany, that just comes to my mind. The Germans are sanctioning Russia, whom they get all their oil from. Yep. Oh, yeah. It's a delusion. It's, 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 it's foolish, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and they think that they can stand um, separate yeah. from, from, um, from this man and, and that man when they all live on the same earth. Yeah, and Texas, a, yeah. amen, yes. And Texas wants, 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 wants to leave... Um, 
um, these, these United States. But it's foolishness when you're on the same landmass. It, it's, it's pure foolishness. But continuing on, um, it says, We are children of God, mutually dependent upon what? Happiness. One another for happiness. Amen. The claims of God and of humanity are upon us. We must all act our part in this life. It is the proper what? Cultivation of the social elements of our nature that brings into sym sympathy with our brethren and affords us happiness in our efforts to bless others. That's why we're Amen. That's Amen. That's why we're Amen. Okay, now, Thomas had this spirit, this policy of Rome, this, uh, I forgot to put that in here. The policy of Rome is independent, but it's really not independent because Rome came in to go and free nations. Oh, sorry. Okay. Rome came into free nations and told them that they'll be, they were free and they were independent, but they really weren't. They were under the rulership of Rome and Rome set forth their army in those lands. And the United States does what? The same thing. When they go and free this nation, that nation, they set up a embassy. They, they set up a base there and they set up their, their, their country's rules there. So this is why Islam is fighting against them. This is why Cuba as well fights, because they see and know that if we submit to the, to, to the United States, we cannot have our independence. It's a strife for the supremacy. Go ahead. Yes. He said all these governors in turn developed a kingly mentality. And, the, and they brought that back to Rome. So every time America leaves a base mm -hmm. in one of these countries, all that's happening is the, the people on the base is picking up that mentality and bringing it back to America. And that's why, that's how America gives up their, mm -hmm. their, their, their constitution. That's how they turn mm -hmm. from, from a republic into an imperial a, nation. Amen. Yeah, because you have, you, you have all these heads ruling. And just like... Pagan Rome, we have all these heads all ruling. Ambassadors that we send in everywhere. Mm -hmm. and they're going and they're coming back with the mentality of this country. Oh, man. So it is, then that fulfills, it's a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. You have all these different um, doctrines on this one, one area. Yes. All right. Um, man. Okay. How much time do I have? Two minutes. All right. I'll just read about Thomas and we'll end there. But I would like to finish this at, at some point. Um, <clears throat> okay, this is talking about um, Thomas, DA 807, paragraph 1. It says, he would not see through the eyes of his what? Or exercise faith which was dependent upon their what? Testimony. Testimony. He took a stance of independence. He ardently loved his Lord, but he had allowed what? Jealousy, Jealousy and... Okay. So because, because of issues that happened ab amongst Peter, James, and John, and, and, and all of them, Thomas was affected by it. And he took an independent spirit to separate himself from Peter, James, and John, and all of them, and had not accepted their words, even though those words were the words of God. Amen? So this is what we must shun. This is the spirit of Rome. It was in Thomas. This was the policy of Rome, this independent from everybody else, and I, I would do it on on my own, but this this only shows a lack of faith. Says says um. But he he had allowed jealousy and and un um, amen to take possession of his mind and heart. Next paragraph. A number of the what disciples now now made the familiar um, uh, uh, amen there. There, um, amen. And at evening, all except Thomas gathered there. So what was so now the powers of darkness were, were gaining the advantage on Thomas's mind. This is why Thomas had to feel the, the holes in Christ's hand and feel the pierced side. He only if he had taken the words of his brethren, only if he had taken the testimony of his brethren from God. Because he was really not rejecting God. He was just rejecting 
Um, so, sorry, not, yes, not a final against Peter, James, and John. He's actually fighting against God himself. So this is, this is the spirit of Rome. And yes, I'm, all right, last, last quote. Sorry, we'll finish with this. PK 59, paragraph 3. In the midst of what? Lurks danger. We have to keep this in mind. So our finances being low is a, is a um, safety net for us. It's to keep us grounded. Because if you go read about Hezekiah, Solomon, and it says that, and when he had prospered, he lifted up himself. So anytime this comes, men are liable to lift up themselves. And you know why? Because that's how faith ends up. Exactly. So he knows the art of making people fall. Amen. That's how, that's how he fell. He fell, he fell by <clears throat> his riches and prosperity. And whenever we get rich or, or get a lot of light or money, he knows exactly how to come in what feelings to agitate yep. to make our minds run in the channel of, I did this, I gave this to myself, I brought this to myself. Look at what I built. Look at these things that I gathered on my cup. That's what he did for himself. You know, I worked for, I did all of this. That's what he said himself. Amen. So he knows exactly what to insinuate into our minds to make us fall. And the Bible says, who supplies the, the effect. pleasure, its affections, and, and its lust? To fight those evil those thoughts. Evil thoughts the That's darkness. The Go ahead, Sinara. That's why um, she has to, um, God has to bring Luther um, um, That's why she has, um, God has to take Luther away from the public. Yes, yes. 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 Amen. Yeah, he was in danger of lifting up himself. No, because they, they were prospering on his ministry. Mm -hmm. So the Lord took him away. away. Yeah, that was their riches. Yeah, yeah, him, himself. Amen, yes. Amen. So we have to keep this in mind that the poverty is not a curse. It's a blessing. It's really a blessing to be constantly dependent because when you don't have money, you pray much more. Lord, help me with this. And then when you don't have money, you, your feelings arise up. So now you can go and ask God to help you with those feelings. When you don't have money, you get angry over this. So, so then that is an, that's a chance. That's a door, door open for you to go to God and say, Lord, help me with this. If you have made any faults in, the, in these things, you can go to God in, the, in that time and ask him. But when you, when you prosper, as Rashad said, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a, than a rich man can enter into the kingdom of heaven. It is difficult. Exactly. Amen. And, and you think that you think that it is. Exactly. Because money does not buy happiness. Money does not bring these, these things. Everybody knows this. But last, continue on. It says, throughout the ages, riches and honor have ever been attended with peril to humility and spirituality. And this Satan knows this. That's why he puts out the policy of Rome so that the spiritual nature can die. So that the, the outlook of your spiritual life can be dismal. So, amen. Everybody that left this movement, they're, they're prospering. They're prospering. Exactly. They're having money. They're getting cars, getting houses, getting lands. Let, let it be. The Lord shall deal with them as, as God dealt with Thomas. But, um, amen, yes, the, the, um, the Lord still saved Thomas, but it was not without a rebuke. He had to go through a hard time. The son that left the father's house and left, left all the riches, it was not, not without a famine. So praise God for his mercy because he, he still has people out there in, in all, those, um, all, all that foolishness. Go ahead, Rashad. You know, a thought came to mind when you said that um, Judas cast his riches to the, to the ground when he found out what he lost. Amen. When he, found well, he out lost the he end, lost. when he saw yeah. the end and saw what he lost. Amen. But then the, the opposite to that is that. Seem right yeah, yeah, amen. It doesn't seem right. But the righteous, the righteous, what they cast to the ground is the, their, their crowns. crowns. Yes, amen. And they see all that they have also gained. Yes, from, amen. From their experience. And they say, "I'm not worthy." Amen. So they They're still don't worthy. lift up themselves, yeah. even though so, they have a crown of gold on their heads. Amen. So even in that, they choose poverty. A amen. They yes. Cast their crown. Amen. So this this is the Christian walk. This is the Christian lifestyle. We must fight against Rome. It's not about 
um, the, the Pope and all these things. It is, but it's talking about our own heart. Martin Luther realized that back in the, in, in the 1500s. And this is something we have to realize even more. Go ahead, Michelle. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Amen. Yes. If we if we feel that if we feel that we can fix things, we will never go to God because oh, I can, can fix it. Satan understands that. Yes. That's why he makes people rich all the time. Yep. He knows as long as you're rich, you will never you will never accept the gospel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because the gospel says be poor. Yeah. And riches is a God. But let's finish this quote. It says it is not the empty cup. That we have, what, difficulty Difficulty in carrying. It is the cup full to the brim that must be carefully balanced. And this is is what happened onto men that, that, that had just left. The Lord filled up their cup with light, but they never poured out the cup onto others. So therefore, they, they had taken on false doctrines and they have turned. It says, affliction and adversity may cause sorrow, but it is what? prosperity that is most dangerous to spiritual life unless the human subject is in constant submission to the will of God that's nice unless he is sanctified by the truth prosperity will surely arouse the natural inclination to presumption so prosperity always leads to presuming upon the mercy of God presumption we will I know for a fact we will receive prosperity the Lord will bless us But Deuteronomy 8, verse 10, the Lord starts off by saying, this is the right way. Take this right way. This is the right way. In the seven churches, the Lord starts off by saying, this is the right thing in which you had did. This is the right thing. Continue in that right thing. So I know we will receive loads of money at some point. But it's not really about the money. It's the spiritual light. It's the riches. It's the the diamond, the emerald, the amethyst, all those things. The light in which the the Lord shall pour out upon us. Those things we shall receive. And those things is what man shall lift themselves up. Because since in 1989, Reagan understood this was a spiritual warfare. So if a heathen can understand this is a spiritual warfare, what about us? We have to realize it's a spiritual warfare. So the abundance of light that, that the Lord Lord will send will make us rich, rich and increasing goods in, in the Lord's goods. But in that, it is, it's a fearful thing if we take, take the glory onto ourselves. Because this is... The next verses here, Ezekiel 28, shows us exactly what Lucifer did in heaven. It is because he, he had the sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the pearl. He had the, the linen, the silk, the this and that. They had eat, he had eaten and was full. Amen. He was rich and increased with good in goods and had need of nothing. That's when he turned. Not when, not, not the one that, 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 that held, held the door for Christ in heaven. Not that one. The covering cherub is the one that fell. Not the one that had the humble lot, but the one that had the exalted lot. So that is what we have to watch against. And I know the Lord is going to test us on that. Because we, we're being tested in poverty. The other way to be tested is in abundance. So we will receive those things. So if we're faithful, we will receive those. And if we're faithful, we will choose poverty still. Amen? All right, this is, this is a lesson for us and um, something we have to keep in mind, something we have to pray much about as well. And there's no other points or questions. Let us close with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Merciful Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for, for the light, light in which you have sent, O Lord. Thank you for, for all, O Lord, seeing that, seeing that without you, O Lord, we are um, of n- not, O Father. Please help us to... to See this more, to lift up your name more. Help us to fight against Rome. Help us to fight against our own wrong thoughts and our feelings. Please, Father, help us to, to seek you more on, on, on all these things and to put self down, O oh Lord. Please, Father. This is how man, man fell. And, and Lord, we ask you, may help us to not follow, Lord. And, and we ask all these things in your son's name we pray. Amen.